the quiet shores of northeast Malaysia are serene and inviting. Perhaps the least likely place for a maritime tragedy. But more than a quarter of a million people headed here on their voyage to a new life. Many would never make it. The tears come out and I cry. Can't control it. It was the late 1970s and the communist takeover of Vietnam prompted the biggest nautical exodus of refugees in modern history. They were to endure treacherous seas, hunger, thirst and attacks by pirates. Now, after building successful lives in Australia, some of the boat people are heading back to retrace their odyssey. <laughs> Many of the people you're about to meet haven't spoken of their experience, not even to their own families. They've come here to revisit some of their darkest days, but also to celebrate their new lives. This month is Puasa month, which is called Malay Fasting Month. Fasting means Malay will not eat from morning until night. Far from the comfort of their home in Melbourne, Farm Van Huan and his wife Bear are about to confront the most painful day of their lives. In late 1978, the couple and their four children set sail from war-torn South Vietnam on a fishing boat owned by Juan. On board were more than 300 paying passengers. After four days sailing, they arrived at this beach, only to be turned away by Malaysian soldiers who fired into the water. That night, while anchored offshore, a thunderstorm swept in. Rồi còn cái một còn cái một một cái mới xi nhỏ thôi. Rồi à, anh Hoàng á mới kêu mình à, ảnh à, thằng con trai nhỏ đó nhảy xuống dưới đó đặng đi vô. Thì chiếc tàu nó cũng gần chìm rồi. Tại vì nước nó vô nhiều rồi với lại Cái tàu nó cũng hư rồi. Thành như mình nói bây giờ là mạnh ai nên lấy lộ vô. Huang took his wife and two of their children to the beach. Malaysian soldiers were there already, stealing jewelry from survivors and the dead. But the storm was so severe, Huang could not return to save seven-year-old Wan and three-year-old Le. Lại lấy mấy xác đó thì mình mới mới thấy là con của mình tại vì nó mặc đồ nguyên bộ nguyên bộ At a mass grave several kilometers from the shore they returned for the first time to see where Huang buried his own children. When we uh, came in here, and all oh, the bus, bush, yeah, and that's my hand, take them, put in here, 
all the people here and they 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 put the dirt up. The dirt. That's, that's my hand. 123 people from Huang's boat are buried here. The gravesite was overgrown and almost lost until a group of Australian Vietnamese boat people got together. Led by Dong Tran, they set about collecting information to allow the visitors to retrace their journeys. Most of them are they are proud, they are refugees. And uh, they want to bring their children and they want to, to, to tell them okay, about the history, about the difficult days when they, they, they um, set uh, their first steps on the shore of, of freedom. Right. How are you? Welcome to yeah. They were painful nice first steps for Huang and Bear. But they met someone else who was there on the day in 1978. Malaysian businessman Lim Bo Ye helped carry the bodies to their resting place. Even up to now, if I thinking about that is, I feel I cannot stand. I will get crying. I cannot, cannot, I just cannot be uh, imagine when that time is happen. Huang and Bear took me to what was once the refugee camp, where they spent the next two years waiting to travel to Australia. The camp is now a women's prison, and from the outside, virtually unrecognisable. And how do you feel coming back here now? Oh, I feel... <laughs> you know... <Very> sad. <laughs> sad? <laughs> Mới vô tới trại thì mình thấy mất hai đứa con đó, mình khủng hoảng vậy lắm. Mình tinh thần mình nó xa xúc á, mình kềm chế lại chứ không là mình giống như là bị thần kinh à. The Malaysia of today is much different than the halfway house it was for boat people in the 1970s and 80s. Of the more than one million Vietnamese who left across the ocean, 250,000 arrived here. At first, the Malaysians had a so-called pushback policy to turn boat people away. But after 1978, officials housed them in camps while their claims for refugee status were processed. Many boat people found themselves on a tiny island called Bidong. On this day, Hue Nguyen from Melbourne is heading back to where he spent time waiting to be resettled. Today I still feel very emotional and um, it's very moving. Hue has brought his 19-year-old son Hans, whose American mother worked for the UN's refugee agency on the island. Everything is in ruins now. And yeah, I don't. did mom work here? I believe so because, and uh, that's why your mom stayed whenever she came here to screen the Vietnamese about people. Mm. People were mainly happy because they, they got what they wanted. They escaped from Vietnam and they survived the high sea, the storm, the pirates attacks. So they generally were happy. The refugee island of Bidong off the Malaysian coast in the South China Sea. Six months ago, Malaysia was predicting that this major camp... Nai belonged to rats. When you came here at night, rats, you could find rats everywhere. Yep. So many of them. One effect of the continuing refugee outflow has been an effort by the refugees themselves 
to better their own lot in camps like this. Actually, it's really emotional just to see. Um, I'm just really curious and, and interested and fascinated in our culture and background, and also the background of my entire family, my mom too. She was here. Oh, Bidong was formed in April of 1978. Dong Tran and his amateur historians want this place to be heritage listed. The last of the refugees only left here in 1991, but the jungle has reclaimed much of the camp. For three years running, Dong Tran has brought former refugees back to the place where he too spent time after fleeing Vietnam. I spent more than 10 years attempt to, to escape unsuccessful, four times caught by Vietnam government and put in jail. Once you, 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 um, you step from the hell to the paradise, and then although it's a, a, a small paradise, but paradise is paradise. <laughs> Hundreds of thousands of boat people would not survive the voyage. Across the South China Sea, pirates raped and murdered refugees. They plundered and sank the tiny fishing boats. Thousands more perished because they were pushed back to sea by hostile governments. Tao Ma has come to Bidong Island with her two sisters to visit the grave of her brother. Lok Ma had become delirious with thirst on board his boat. He made the fatal mistake of jumping overboard to drink. Um, Lok, her brother, was a very sweet and gentle guy and um, he was very much loved by his sisters and his parents. Um, he has escaped for 16 times, so this was his 16th escape and he died once he got to Bidong Island. The sisters have come to take Locke home. Now I feel happy because I, I remember him the 24 year. Yeah, now I, I'm very happy, happy, yeah. Tao and her sisters perform a traditional Buddhist ritual of burning money. So Tao arrived here a month after her brother in 1984 and he was already dead and buried here. It was a mount of dirt. Uh, when she arrived she got it built, cemented and had a tombstone built. She personally engraved her brother's name and details on this tombstone with a piece of stick from this area. Now I take out the body, him. I bring him to come to Vietnam. Yeah, come back to Vietnam. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, because of pushback, pass away and sunken in the open sea. We want to revive the story. We, we want to, to, uh, to uh, make public, to make as many people know about that as, 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 as possible. For Huang and Bear, the couple who lost two of their four children on this beach, the return to Malaysia has given them a chance to grieve. After settling in Melbourne, the family built a successful business in hot bread shops. Before uh, we came there and in the beach. Now and, retired, uh, the their comfortable lives are shared with their four children, including me. daughter Kelly and, and son Kim, who survived that fateful day. A son-in-law and granddaughter completes the family. <laughs>
Well, now that you've been there, now I've been there. and you, you know where yeah. your two yeah. daughters are now, been there, and you've, been you've seen their names on the tombstone, and you know they're, they're yeah. resting there now. Yeah. We're lucky to know that they're there. Yeah. The first generation, they spend time to work hard, to settle. The second and third generation, they try to integrate into the new uh, society. And the fourth and fifth uh, generation and on, so they, they, their tendency is to look back. It was a long and dangerous journey for 137,000 boat people who were to later become Australians. After 30 years of living for the future, some at least have become more accepting of the past.